So the PCB design is finally complete and I'm very excited to say that I'm going to order the PCBs now and I'll show you how to do that in this video. But firstly, let's summarize what we have done. So the main aim of this project was to learn about power supplies. So in order to do that, we have designed a number of different power supplies for this board. As you can see, we have a buck boost converter, buck converter, we have a inverting converter, and we also have a boost converter on this PCB. We also have a battery charging circuit, which we have created using TP4056, which is sitting right here. The batteries can be connected to this input here. And then I've added a bit of strain relief here with these holes. We also have a USB-C connector as one of the inputs and the two 5K11 resistors so that it works with USB-C devices. For the output connections, we have added banana jacks. So you can see the five inputs over here. One is obviously the ground on this side, and then we have the five volts, three volts inverting, and so inverting 24 volts, so that's negative 24 volts, and the positive 24 volts. Obviously, the most important thing, which is the logo over here. And then finally, I've added some standoffs. This is just to support the board. For me, the main use from this board will be when I'm designing random circuits for my YouTube channel. But it was also for me to just learn more about how these converters work. The design itself is four layers. I think in the end, I didn't need the four layers. But since I started with four layers, I kept with it. And I didn't want to change afterwards. As the cost difference between two layers and four layers is not that significant anymore. There is a lot of empty space on this board as well, so this could have been shrunk down if I needed to. But for something like this, I don't really mind. And if I look at the size of this board as well, you can see it's literally 6.3 centimeters by 6.7 centimeters. So it's relatively small now anyway. I think if you make it too, too small for something like this as well, it's just gonna move around with the cables that you put on here, which it probably will do anyway. So now for the manufacturing side, I'm proud to say this is my first sponsored video. I would like to extend a huge thank you to NextPCB for sponsoring this video. I'm getting this power supply manufactured by NextPCB and they are also sourcing all the components that I need for this. I strongly recommend you check out the services if you haven't already. I will leave a link in the description. NextPCB offer PCB manufacturing with a quick turnaround time and they have tons of customization options. In order to start the manufacturing process for this board, what we need to do is firstly create the Gerber files. In order to do that, we need to go onto the plot setting over here, which should open a dialog box like this. Over here, you select the directory where you want to put the Gerber files. And in here, you select all the layers that you need to print. So obviously you've got loads of user layers and courtyards and margins and fabrication and stuff like that. Obviously the most important layers are the copper layers, the silk screen, the mask, the paste and the edge of the board. Finally, you want to press the plot button. So once you press this, I've already done this for this design, so I'm not going to do it again. You will get the output files that you need for, to get the board manufactured. So that is for all the layers. And then you can see on the board itself, I've got a number of different holes through holes from on the PCB itself. And in order to generate the information for those through holes, you press the generate drill file. So once you've done all that, you should end up with a folder that looks something like this. Obviously you won't have the zip folders uh, and I'll show you why I've got them in a little while, but you've got the different layers. So the CU stands for the copper layers, which in my case, I've got four, then the two drill files. So NPTH is non-plated through hole. PTH is the opposite, the plated through holes. You've got the edge cuts, which defines the edge of the PCB. In order to get this board manufactured, what you need to do is basically, obviously it depends on the manufacturer you're using, but for next PCB, you need to put it into a zip folder, something like this. And then what you can do is go to their website and press the instant quote button. And then this will give you the option of uploading your Gerber files. So you can only do this with zip files or raw files and very quickly that will load up your design and you can see you know that my pcb design has come through correctly and in here it will automatically detect how many layers you have for your copper um, you can select your temperature rating on the board so that's tg that's classification temperature it's basically the temperature at which the board starts to expand significantly 
and over here you've got the size of the board which is detected from the edge cut layers how many you want to order what thickness you want and then you've got some customization options so you can go for black ink on different color solder masks so obviously um, i've gone for green over here so there are a number of different um, specialized processes in here which obviously you would need to consider on an individual basis other services that that next pcb offer you can get the stencil made if you want to build the boards yourself or if you have a pcb assembly line you can also source components which is what i'm doing here but one of the main reasons why i've come to the website is to show you the Gerber viewer which is a very useful tool for making sure that the files you have generated are accurate to the design that you need so they have a version of this software which you can download which is called hqdfm which is designed for manufacture and you can also do it online um, basically what you need to do is drag your zip file into here you don't even have to sign up for this so it's a great feature and you can see your pcb move things around toggle your layers if you need to and it gives you a cost breakdown as well you can see with my board design it's highlighted three issues which i'm going to look at uh, make sure that it's not a problem so now i'll quickly show you how i update my wires so that i don't break the rules for this manufacturer so i'm going to go into my wires i'm going to add in 0.4 and the rec smallest recommended was 0.3 so i might go 0.45 i might need to delete some wires but that's okay so go for point three then go into over here edit track and wire properties make sure that only wires is ticked filter by size 0.15 select this and press ok so you can see all the wires have changed now obviously i want to make sure that i'm not intruding on anything and that should have got rid of the two errors from my report so that's this one over here and this one over here So you can see over here the PCB I ordered has arrived and it's looking very good. Obviously at the moment I've not got any components on there as the components itself have not arrived yet. Once the components arrived I'll be assembling this board. I think some of the components are going to be very difficult but I'll give it a go. Some other components such as the TP4056 and this regulator down here is going to be relatively easy. You can see it doesn't look so bad at all. There's the logo, again, obviously the most important thing on this board. And then you've got the standoffs, obviously this board, um, you can see it's very good quality and arrived very quickly from next PCB. I do have the banana sockets on there right now, but I'm going to take them off and I'll show you what the board looks like without them as well. So here you can see the board without the banana sockets on them. As I showed you in the video, the board itself is approximately 73 millimeters, and obviously the Y dimension is quite similar as well. This is the other side. Obviously, I told you in the video, I didn't end up using majority of the space on this board. I could have done with a two layer board if I wanted to, but I didn't want to change it in the end. I'm going to be putting the USB-C connector over here where SK1 is. I've got the bunch of switches over here with SW1, SW3 and SW2. So we've got a single pole single throw switch there and two single pole double throw switches. And there are quite a few improvements I could have made to this board. But obviously it's one of my first boards that I've designed. And when I build it up, I'll see what's not working, what else can be improved. And I do have some EMC test antennas that I can use to to do near field probing to see if there's any emissions from this board. I expect there will be, but it's all been a learning experience for me. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series and this is the end result from this series. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.